Okay, let's Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Fresh Lanes Podcast. My name is Joel. I'm Nicholas. And today, what are you going to do today? Uh, oh, first, which, which, which sports check? Uh, today I'm wearing my... <laughs> today I'm wearing my Seiko Toto. I don't know if you can see it. I always have this Toto. Yeah. yeah. If okay. anyone wants to... Sorry. If anyone wants to buy it, uh, please hit me up in the comments below. I'm still trying to sell it. Actually, yeah, mine is a uh, vintage... Uh, 1970 Seiko Expo Limited Edition. Uh, I don't know Seiko 6119. Uh, something something. Four. He still remember the first number. Yeah. I want to tell you something sorry about this watch first. Oh my so gosh. why? <laughs> so basically, right, when I first bought this watch, I Joel actually sent me an Instagram story. Or like a ah, post. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was like, wow, that's beautiful, you know. So I went to find and find and find and find, just for me to realize right that there is no available listing of this watch anywhere. Then I went to Instagram, so I searched like, right, under the hashtag. Uh, I think it was like 6119, then the reference number. Mm. So I think it's 6119, if I'm not wrong. So then I found a few people that was like, they list their watch, but they never sell. I mean, they're not paid to sell one. Mm. So I like found this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I found this guy, uh, Indonesian. I just texted him, I just DM him, hi, are you paying to sell your watch? And then he said, um, Sure, how much? So we were negotiated back and forth, back and forth. Then I got it for around um, three fifty sing dollars, including shipping and everything. Mm. Right. So then the, the thing that came with this watch is uh, everything's original from the, the, the crystal to the, the dial and everything. And this dial has a very nice like rosy patina to it. You attach the photo. Right. But then the thing is that the crystal is super super scratched, it's super super like scuffed. You can see right? Yeah. Yeah. So then I went on a hunt for the actual crystal. So the part number I remember very clearly. Because even until today I'm still finding. <laughs> 310 T10ANS. Then the cheapest one I found online was like uh, 30, I think? 30 USD. So over there it's very expensive. Uh, so I couldn't get it. Uh. So then I, I found one cheaper one, which is like $10. Then when the part came, I realized it's the wrong part. You know what I mean? So then I couldn't change the glass. So I still have this watch, like, oh, original. You know? But I'm not complaining, I'm not complaining. Oh, it's 61198090. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it's, yeah, it's in the back. 61198090. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Actually, it's, it's, it's scuffed, right? But you still can see, I think it's fine. Though. It's correct, it's correct. I really don't think you need to change it. Yeah. I know, I love it though. Yeah. My favorite watch is the collection, by the way. Mm. One off, I guess. I mean, wait, what did I say? You can use to me, by the way. Huh? Yeah. That's the last time you asked me what's my favorite watch. Then I told you it's my dad watch. Then I oh, yeah. <laughs> It's just whatever watch is wearing today. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so then I just want to cover a bit about what happened with us from episode 1 until now, episode 2. Yeah. Uh, so we. Okay, just something a bit, a bit about ourselves. We met in Bali. So we've been friends for like 3 years now. And I guess we bonded mainly on watches la, at the start. And chemistry, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah chemistry, yeah, yeah. So. Um, we just graduated not long ago, uh, last month. Actually, at the time of filming episode one, we recently finished our final exams, uh, right? Yeah, it was yeah. like a few weeks after our final exams. Uh. Then we yeah. took advantage of our, our status as students yeah, to yeah. book the free pot in, in the library. Yeah, yeah, so episode one was actually filmed in the library for. And today, uh, it's not in the library for anymore because we've already graduated and <laughs> technically can't go back to school. So... Yeah, yeah mystery location. Yeah, mystery location. Uh, yeah, what else? Oh yeah, then, so all of us, what watch do you wear on graduation? Oh, oh, okay, I have it here right now. Oh shit. I wore my, okay, actually at first I wanted to wear my uh, Seiko 5, right? Because a uh, very significant piece, uh, sentimental, it's the first watch I ever bought. So I wanted to wear that, but then I realized it's a formal occasion. And I was wearing like, long sleeve shirt. And I realized that the, the watch I think was it's a bit too big la, to fit under the, the cuff. Mm. And then uh, so I just decided to switch over to my dress watch, which I usually wear, which is my Elba. I don't know what, what the reference number is, I don't know what model it is, but it's quartz, is it? Yeah, it's quartz. It's supposed to be though. Yeah, yeah. I, I my dad bought this for me uh in like about ten years ago, I think when I was like primary six. I don't know why my dad just wanted to buy me a watch. Okay, so this is your technically is this your first watch? Ah uh, yeah, this is my first watch that I ever got. Uh, yeah, but at that time I didn't really like watches. I don't know, my dad just wanted to buy it for me. Mm. So I didn't wear it for a good like 
five six years but not, not even that like seven years maybe until i got interested in watches and then i found it i picked it up for my drawer then i changed the battery because by the time the battery is already mm. gone now so i changed the battery then i wore it um but i would say that out of the five watches in my collection this is probably the one i wear the least uh because i mean it's, it's a dress watch and yeah it's very thin it's very nice it has sapphire crystal um it has blue hands not not the one with the heat lah, but painted blue hands usually um higher quality blue hands are heated lah, right mm. you know right i don't know yeah no? it's called blue i don't know blue something oh like is it something to do like along with the, the pepsi the, i don't know pepsi? like that you know you know for the oh no 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 like, like it's just like heated and it becomes blue lah. oh yeah so that's more right. that's more like that's better lah, rather than painted uh. so this is painted but honestly it doesn't really matter lah. <laughs> yeah so uh, well, oh this cost i think this i remember this costed like around 130 dollars so it's a pretty good deal eh, like honestly oh even the dial has like some oh yeah the dial also is uh i i don't know how to explain it like some design yeah uh. we'll attach a picture of here okay yeah so for nick oh yeah i wore uh my rolex explorer 2 wait what's the reference number do you know no <laughs> oh i know okay, let, let, me, let me do a quick quick search right now rolex It's basically the one with the red, the red hand. Yeah. Yeah. But then, it's not my watch, uh, basically. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, so basically, it's, it's not even my watch. It's my dad's watch. Then, he just lent it to me for, for my graduation, uh, so that I wore it. So it's the Rolex Explorer 2, white now red hand, steel watch 16570. Yeah. yeah. And personally, this is one of my favorite Rolexes. Uh. It's because the it's not because of like it's exposed to or what, but it's mainly because of the red hand, the smaller size. It's forty mm, I think, compared to the newer one, which is forty two. And then um, at the back of the clasp, right, is the old fashioned like hollow hollow links kind. Mm. Yeah, so I love it. You know? Then it looks like it's just a very nice like full piece, and not just like you know this usually, like usually like nowadays it's like oh it's not it's not it's not it's not. Then at the back is a full big chunk of metal link. Yeah, yeah. yeah then I think now it's still ugly. So I tend to stray away from Rolex like, in general controversial opinion, but this is the one I wear consistently uh, the most. Mm. Yeah, it's nice. It's pretty light uh, actually. On the contrary to what right. you're putting. Like usually when, yeah. when you hold a Rolex, it's actually quite he hefty, but this one is very light because it's a uh, hollow ending, right? Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's why it's very light. Uh. It's nice, uh. Yeah. My favorite Rolex, I think. One of my favorite Rolex. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So oh, we also attached some uh, graduation pictures here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, after this, uh, we'll, both of us will be enlisting in like two weeks' time. So, yeah, that's quite sad. Uh, well, uh, I'm pretty sure we can release one or two more episodes. Yeah, yeah. I'll see all that, I'll see how. I mean, yeah. if you see, you see, you see, don't see, then you know, you know why. Yeah. <laughs> okay? So then, we prepared a very fun activity for, I think, for us and for the viewers. We mm. basically had to build a watch collection with an $8,000 budget. Mm. Okay, so then the watch we have to choose is one dress watch, one diver watch, one chrono, one daily beater, and then one fun watch. So we'll explain uh, why we chose the watches and whatever. Okay, so the first yeah. one we're going with is. Wait, wait, wait you have to start about first. Yeah, the first one we're going with is uh, the daily beater. Very daily beater. Yeah, go first, you go first. You go first. <laughs> okay, so the, my daily beater is my most expensive uh, purchase, which is the Tudor Black Bay 58 black and it costs uh five five point three seven k oh yeah we'll attach a picture here and then we we'll compare it to the next one oh my daily beater is okay this the is the full name this is the full name because I, I copy and paste expedition north field post mechanical 38 millimeter eco friend oh wait this one the brand oh wait timex okay i repeat timex expedition north field post mechanical 38 millimeter eco friendly leather strap watch <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's a mechanical movement, like 100 meter was water resistance, it's just perfect la, for your daily daily users. Mm. But obviously not something that you would go and like use if you are using it for very arduous purposes or what. Mm. But it's just a very nice daily meter. La. Then usually for me, I would tend to choose like sickles, you know, citizens, but mm. this time around I tend to go super different. So the fun thing is there's not a single Seiko in my whole uh, five, five watches. Mm, okay. Yeah, so the first yeah, one is the Timex. Yeah. It's $443. Wow, $443 is a bit steep. Uh. 
for Timex. No, but the thing is, you can find it for cheaper, but it's quartz now. Uh, ah? No, you said it's mechanical. No, no, as in, you can find it for cheaper. Oh, as a quartz watch. Yeah, as a quartz watch. Yeah, right? a quartz watch. Ah, okay. It's like what, $200? Yeah, so okay, then okay. I decided to opt for the it, mechanical one. It looks like a Hamilton khaki feel plus the Seiko 5, the fuel watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Together. Yeah, but I'm fine with this. Uh. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's quite nice. Uh. Right. 38 millimeters. Okay, then you will let the, the audience vote. Yeah. How, how to vote though? Just comment down below. Yeah, <laughs> comment down below. Which one will you choose? Or if you have your own selection also, please. The next one? Uh, the wait, I, mean, I haven't even explained my own watch yet. Oh yeah, what the heck? Wait, so I, I chose the Tudor, right? Uh, actually, we, before this $8,000 thing, right? We actually did a $10,000 uh, selection also. Oh, we did it twice already? Yeah, we did it twice already. Yeah. So I, I chose a Tudor in the previous one for my entire world, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think. So I, I know I chose the Tudor. Two I said that. It's the, the second. Yeah, the second time I'm choosing a Tudor. Oh. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so this time I chose it for my daily meter because, um, I mean, I don't really like to daily my watches. So I feel like a Tudor, I mean, I always wanted a Tudor Black Bay. At first I really hated it because when I saw the next one, I just didn't really like it. Like. Even though the bracelet was like, very nice, but now I'm going to like it and yeah. Yeah, because you, you start to appreciate bigger watches now. Right? Yeah, it's something that I'll wear like forever, like perpetually. Like. And well, I really like yeah. beat it, and yeah. that's why it's a daily beater, right? I see what you mean. Uh. I mean, yeah, and I don't mind spending like five thousand dollars on it. And, and honestly, five thousand dollars for a Tudor is a pretty good. So, so would deal. this be your first luxury watch? Luxury and free watch. Yeah. Is it really a luxury watch? Though? Yeah, yeah, the really watch. Sure, no, I was, sure. I would consider luxury watch as like okay. Rolex, AP, Patek. No, but this is the entry, 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 ah, uh, entry, entry luxury. Entry luxury. Like, yeah. Um, I have to see lah, because if there are new releases on the market, then. Like for Tudor, like do you, do you put the black or the blue? Black. Blue? Black. Black. Like this is actually black. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because there's a new release, like the you know the Tudor Black Bay Pro. Uh, yeah, that one's really nice to me. Like. <laughs> okay, that obviously it doesn't like it. I, I don't know why, like, but it's nice. Like. Oh, nice, huh? It's nice. Uh, actually personally, even for me, I think the whole black bay line is super super nice. Mm. But they are starting to like beat it to the ground. You know what I mean? It's a bit like Omega with their Speedmaster. When they, oh, keep, they keep just making different color, different color, then it's like, what's the point? Oh, yeah, it's like Seiko 5. Because yeah, you, you know for a fact that nothing will beat the original. Like, yeah, so, yeah, something like that. No, but it's a bit like Rolex. If you find a design that works, then you wouldn't want to change it. If you didn't broke, don't fix it, you know what I mean? But you try to like modify yeah, yeah. it, make it more exciting. Make it more fun, yeah. That's yeah. the thing. You discontinue once in a while, you bring, bring back new things, bring fun and interesting things. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, the thing is, Tudor, in a sense, is, it was exciting at first, but now it's just like, why, why do I mean, why mm, Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of a lot of the Tudor designs, actually. To be honest. The, the classic line is all... Back Bay, basically the Back Bay. Really <laughs> no, because Tudor basically have two, two lines. Right? One is Sport. So the Sport one consists of Black Bay, so you have Black Bay 58, Black Bay 41, which is the oh, okay. heritage like, with the rose and the uh, in-house open 70 hours power reserve, that one. Yeah. It's a bit thicker one, that one. Then you have the Polaros. Black Bay 38, oh, I think. 38, 36. You know? yeah, yeah, so then that one don't feature the bezel. Yeah. Right. And then Pelagos, yeah. Then there's the, the new one, is the not new, la, the quite old one, the PO one, is it? Oh yeah, the PO one, yeah. So there's a sports line, right? then mm. under the sports line, there's this one called the classic line. So then that's where they do all the, like, the glamour date, uh, what's it called? Glamour date, glamour day date, I think. Mm. I think the whole line, right, the whole classic line is all terrible. Like, terrible. Yeah, Except I hate for that. one. Uh, I, I love the Tudor Claire de Rose. <laughs> do you know? Do you know? No. It's a, it's a woman's watch. I tried it on like a couple, a couple of times. But Obviously it's too I mean, small. It uh, obviously it's too small. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, looking at it. Bah, 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 it bah, bah, looks bah, like a Cartier. It looks it, like a Tissot, it, but it, more refined. Ah, it looks like a Tissot for many people. But, but more refined. And then you can see the inspiration drawn from Cartier, which is used the blue little oh, yeah, I mean, crystal at the side. Okay, but to be honest, if I wanted to get this kind of watch, right, I would just get a Cartier. <laughs> Wait, how much, is it, how, much, how much does it cost? I don't know. It costs like. Uh, 3 to 4k, then I'd rather get a Cartier, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, it costs 3.42k. Yeah, I'd rather get a Cartier. Oh, really? See, it's so cool, is it? Even the 
the class at the end for the small little rules. Ah. Oh. It's beautiful. Uh, it's beautiful watch. Mm. That. Mm. Uh, I would consider getting for my 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 partner. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Because I want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, but thirty four is the biggest ego, so no chance. Thirty four is yeah. Right, uh. If they do like thirty six, right? Oh, I mean, you can wear if you can wear your your what you call your tech for you. Yeah. Ah, uh. uh, that's true. Okay, I'm gonna get that. My next watch. Okay. The woman's watch. You wanna move on? Move on. Move okay. on to. You choose. You choose. Dress or dress. Dress watch. watch. Dress watch. Okay, I'll go first. I chose the Timex Marlin thirty four millimeters. Hey. I wanted to get a gold one, but. I don't really find a price for it. Oh, the dial is nice though. Yeah, it's, it's a nice, it's a champagne dial. I call it a champagne dial. It's like off-white color. And it's also sunburst, okay. uh, which is the effect that you see. But the, the, the indices, the Yeah, the indices is, is like that because um, it's reminiscent of the vintage uh, Timex, the original Timex Marlin. Uh, and it costs uh, $435, which, what is, a, which is a bit steep, but considering it has a mechanical movement like your, uh. your Timex. So, but it's also a Timex, yeah. And the mechanical movement is from Seagull. Seagull is, you know, your Seagull. <laughs> yeah, I read, I read out on it. Oh, really? Yeah, it's from Seagull. So it's, 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 it's reputable. La. So it's not too bad. It's a good size 34 mm for a dress watch. It has a domed acrylic crystal, which is, I would prefer it be sapphire, but then again, it's a Timex. So, mm. yeah, I would say, I would totally wear it. La. I would totally wear it. It's not bad. La. It's, not, it's bad. not bad. But mine means for me. Uh, I mean, but mine again, I think it's quite. How do I put it? It's not really a dress watch. Okay, then that's all. But <laughs> next, <laughs> he lost. It's the lowest part campus. Uh... Okay, or, honestly, originally I chose the Nomos Orion, which is uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, way more dressier than this. Yeah. Because it's like more minimalistic. Uh, I think it's thinner or something. It's thinner, it's refined, la. right? But I think it's, it costs like 3K or like 4K. I forgot the Ah, uh, 4K. 4. Four thousand four hundred dollars. Mm. So I couldn't fit it in the budget, so that I had to downsize the. So this is how much? One eight eight zero, which is the cheapest the most available. Oh. I, I knew I wanted to feature the most in my in my my collection. It's also his favorite the most, Yeah. It's, yeah. Because the most for me is one of the most exciting brands. One of the brands I love the most. Like, I used to hate like minimalistic watches because it's like it, it reminds me of Daniel Wellington. Ah yes. Then it's like, <laughs> It's like, it's cheap. You know, it just looks cheap. Yeah. But then, when you read out about Nomos and their history, right, you realize that they're from Glashut, or Glashutter. Glashutter? Right? It's Glashutter, by the way. Oh. Yeah. Then, the thing with Glashutter, like, to put Glashutter on your, your dial, right, you have to be, if I'm not mistaken, like, at least 90% made in Glashutter. Mm -hmm. Then you can feature the word Glashutter in your, your, your dial. Right? So, at least you know that this watch, this Nomos Glashutter, uh, Club campus or any of their watches is ninety percent made in Glasgow, Germany, and even they are cheapest watch at one thousand eight hundred dollars. Right, features an in-house movement, right, mechanical wine, mm -hmm. and it's a young brand with about 30, 50 years of history. It's just it's insane. To me, it's insane. This is like legit one of my favorite watch watch brand of all time. So, would you consider this a dress watch? You can dress it up, but it's not necessarily a conventional dress watch. That's this my thing. I mean, there's no hard and fast rule, obviously. Oh. Um, I would wear it as a dress watch now. So yeah, 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 I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. No, no, but, but I'll not give this watch to you in terms that you win this. No, yeah, it's up to us, guys. Yeah, yeah, it's up to you, lah. Yeah. Exactly. Just comment down below which which one wins. Okay. Alright. Okay. Next. 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 Is that what you want? I want the fun watch. Okay. Okay. Well, mine is, mine is insane. I'm going, I'm going yeah, to I, I, okay. mm. So basically for this fun watch, right? Um, I, go, I went with the Bulova Computron 97C110. Not bad, right? <laughs> Not bad, right? It's, it's basically it's a... Atrocious. Three. Why? It's I don't like it. I mean... It's a full gold... I'm going to attach the photo idea. Plated? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah. uh, it's not full gold, obviously. This one comes in at a 371.02 converted because I cannot really find uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. actual price man. So then yeah. whenever I online it just says that like, uh, it's retail for like 220 or 250 USD. So that I convert like, uh -huh. right. So it's just it's just a quad obviously uh -huh. with a little LED screen. But then to me it's just because it's a it's quite a vintage design from from Bulova also. 
So then I just took it out. I think it's quite, I think it's quite fun. Oh, I would personally, I mean, there's, a, there's, there's one in the like, stainless steel version too. But I thought, why not? Because we both are into go watches. Mm-hmm. Then, my as well. Okay. Yeah. So this is my, my fun, fun, fun watch. watch. And I, I think it's by far my best decision for a fun watch. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, for me, right? Uh, what comes to your mind when you think of a fun watch? Like, what brands come to your mind? Brands? Like, to me, right? To no, me, right? no. <laughs> no. <laughs> to me, right? Fun watch, I think of Swatch. Because Swatch has a lot of like fun designs, very colorful. So I chose a Swatch. And also, I needed to fit my budget. So <laughs> I needed to think of a cheaper watch. Now. So I chose this Swatch Eiffel Tower. Wow, this is disgusting. I love it. How, I love it. How can you say mine is gross, man? No. Okay, it costs $119. Three times cheaper than yours. And How you're 19? 19. Oh. And I can get my battery replaced as watch perpetually. Okay. Yeah. And okay, so one, one, one thing I'll wear it. I'll wear it to like a beach or like, you know, when I I can wear it to a podcast, I can, you know. I'll wear this, I'll wear this to a nightclub. Yeah, I, I'm not going to nightclub, so. This is a baller watch. This is a kid watch. It's not a kid. Okay. I really have a thing for orange hands. I mean, orange hands contrast with the dark, right? It's a nice blue. I, I just think it's nice, lah. It's um, an artist designed this, so really, and it's a lot, yeah, and it's along with other releases also, yeah. So this is one of the releases. It's not. It's it's so swatch. Yeah, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I, I thought I thought you were gonna go. It's with a fun watch. No, I thought you were gonna go with this. Yeah, the moon swatch. Then okay, now okay. Oh, let's just. Uh, I know. I know you got it for another day. Yeah, but I know you did Okay, but for, for me, it's, it's, it's... Go ahead, so just to give you some context, right? Uh, we played this twice before. So the first time was with 20k. No? Yes, 20k. Hey, really 20k. No? Then the second time was 10k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Because the first time we had, we had a lot of big brands. I remember very clearly. Then second time was with um, 10k. And now we 8k. Right, so if you want to see more in the future, maybe 7k, 5k, make it even harder for us, then you just comment down below. Yeah. Right, so then... For 20k one, the fun watch I chose was a ball engineer with the rainbow hands. Then for my 10k one, I chose a. What did I choose? What do you choose? Oh, I forgot already. Yeah, I forgot already. Yeah, it's also. You can see, you can see. But yeah, so I chose the ball engineer because it's rainbow, one, right? And then because it's like some engineering feat, right? That you can make the. Indices glow in different colors. It's like they use different uh, elements or something. Oh, you chose the Jaeger. Ah, then the JLC reverse. Yeah, the JLC reverse so classic. Then for me, that's fun uh, because you can flip. But then all of this is like, eh, you know what I mean? It's like you can you can force the narrative. But for me, this Bulova, right? It's like it's just fun. You just look at it. You know, it's fun. You know, it's not meant to be a conventional watch, and it's like. Yeah, mine as well. Sheesh. You look at it, it's not a conventional watch. It doesn't have any indices. It's not a conventional watch. Yes, a art piece on the watch itself. Okay, in my 20k one, I chose a Bell and Ross. Not my best choice. In my 10k <laughs> one, I chose the Tissot PRX with the green. But your best choice also. Not my best choice also. I would say this one is the more, most fun. It's the most fun. Most fun. Yeah, okay, I'll give it. It's the most appropriate for the category. Okay. Yeah. But I think mine wins. Next. Up to you now. We left two, right? We left two. Uh, yeah, we left two. Okay, we do chrono. Uh. Chrono? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think this. So, it's pretty funny, because just now you mentioned that one of your watches used the seagull movement, right? Oh. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 I know what I Yeah. Actually, I went with the seagull. Uh, the seagull 1963 um, chronograph. So, seagull is a China brand. So, I read somewhere, like, a couple, I think one year back, right? So I'm not too sure, it's a bit foggy in my mind or what, but it's created in like Mountain Tong era one. Like it's not like a young brand, you know what I mean? It's like it's been around for super super long. So then this is one of their most iconic watches. Um, the Seagull 1963 chronograph, then it comes in 38mm and 42mm. Oh, 42? I think it's a bigger one, yeah. But then the one I have is the smaller one. Right. Is features a mechanical movement, all in-house, all built by them, by them. and then they sell the movement to, to other, other uh, what's it called, other companies also. So a lot of the cheap chronographs you find right, will feature the Seagull movement, or a lot of uh, 
company who use Seagull because it's mechanical uh, and it's beautiful by the way. It's legit damn beautiful. We will attach the case back in the photo here also. It's by far right, one of the most beautiful movements I've seen up to date. Maybe second to Omega. Because you haven't seen better. Maybe second to Omega. Because yeah. I have uh, the professional one. Mm. Right. But it's legit insane. For the price, the price also, eh, this is 277 converted from USD. Okay. Right. But I found it on Carousel. My one, uh, the one I bought uh, was $186. Okay. Right. So you can't tell me otherwise. 180 or, okay, let's just use this retail value. 277 for a mechanical watch. Mm-hmm. What can you complain, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, I absolutely adore this watch. Yeah. But I give it to my, to my, to my girlfriend, really. Mm. Yeah. Okay, when I think about chronograph, right? Apart from the fact that it can be used as a chronograph function, right? I feel like a chronograph should have contrasting dials. But what you see from the oh, seagull, it doesn't have contrasting sub dials. So to me, right, from afar, I can't tell there's a chronograph. Now. That's why I will never buy a chronograph that doesn't have contrasting sub dials. You can tell it's a chronograph when that okay, no, no, like that's, extra like, that's my no, that's like my opinion now. Like when, what are, how I want a chronograph to do. Right, so I chose the Citizen no. Suno uh, oh. reissue. <laughs> this one. Yeah, I, I, I almost bought it, la, to be honest. Uh-huh. I, bought it on, I almost bought it on Carousel. How much? Like, I can't remember how much, but I think it's like two, three hundred dollars But the one, the retail price is three to two thousand dollars. It has a quartz movement, okay, but to me, the design um, is what I look for in the chronograph. Yeah, because my the first chronograph that I ever fell in love with is the Rolex Daytona. I saw it, okay, yes, but like I saw it on someone's wrist, like uh, online, and then, well, I saw the contrasting dials, right, and I was, I was blown away like, by how a chronograph would look. And so, from then onwards, I've never looked at any other chronographs like, um, that doesn't feature a contrasting dial. That's why this citizen to me is a affordable chronograph. It's a quartz, sure, but honestly, quartz has its benefits also. We'll be talking about that later on, but. Yeah, and again, it has an orange hands, which, which is what I uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like orange hands. Yeah, and I think the bracelet is very nice. So it's hey, you know, yeah. one second. This is the the watch, you know, the watch that Barney gave me. Yeah, yeah. It's just this, you know. Yeah, but, but it's a the it's original the, one. The original. original one. I mean, yeah. quote for original. That one is way more expensive. Yeah. It, it's an automatic movement. Uh, yeah, this is a quartz. But honestly, you think about it, right? Nobody really knows it's a quartz because the ticking hands is on the sub down. So yeah. yeah, and but the bracelet is really nice. It's like uh, it's sort of like a vintage look. I have the bracelet also, my original, mm. but I lost it. <laughs> but In, yeah. this kind of chronograph is called blue head chronograph. Yeah, yeah. Right, because you see the the, the two little uh, the pushers, pushers right yeah. yeah. like so there. It looks like a blue horn. Blue horn yeah. yeah, it's it's really cool though. It's cool, it's cool. It's really cool. I, I think I chose mine more more out of sentiment. Yeah, yeah. But then again, I can't really complain for it's like cheaper than yours, but it's cheaper than yours. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. It's, Mechanical. Yeah. Yeah, but of course, it, it has its own problems. Uh, because it's so cheap uh, oh, and it's mechanical, whenever it spoils, it's very hard to find for parts. Uh. There are parts to repair. Right. And you read, I read a lot of like Reddit online or what. They say like, if you want to repair, right, you have to go to the official like Seagull um, distributor, which in Singapore they used to have, but no more really. Mm. So it's pretty damn hard to find mm. someone that will do it. Yeah. Okay, last one. Last one? Last one. Diver. 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 Okay, you go first? Oh, okay, okay. I go my first? Okay, I, yeah, you go. Okay, so with my diver, I have the Breitling Super Ocean 36mm. So the reference number is A17316D 81C1S1. Okay, so the retail price is $4,990. Ooh. Right. Ooh. It features a little nice, um, what would you call this? A pistol or baby blue down with a dark deep blue bezel and a little red um, accent at the end of the second hand. Just it's, it's nice. It's nice. Just a diver, like, yeah. Just a diver. Like. There's so much to be said. It looks very similar to the Tech Royal, which is what I'm a fan of. That design cue, like, basically. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. And I love the the size, like. I think for me, the, my favorite size is around 36 to up to 40. Like, of course, I can wear bigger one, but I wouldn't levitate to it. I would prefer it if it's a bit smaller. So, that's the reason why I chose this 36mm instead of the 
for the tour. Mm. And when I first saw this watch, right, it was in store. Then I tried it on, then I loved it. I loved it, I loved it since. But I don't think I ever get it. Yeah. 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 Because of this, this. I don't know. I just, just not it. Yeah, just something about it. Yeah. But it's beautiful. It's still beautiful. Yeah. Nice, yeah. But it's a bit steep. Yeah. <laughs> 490. Oh, but it's in house movement. Right wing. You know what I mean? It's, it, you can put this on power with your, your Twitter. Right? What I say. You're paying for brand. You're paying for in house movement. Yeah, I guess. Okay. It's entry luxury also. Entry luxury. Yeah. But no bracelet. Lah. But I prefer it this way. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you also, I cannot afford anything else. <laughs> no more budget. But I, I, have to make, I have to make budget for this. That's why I cut, I cut the Orion to the club. Oh, I mean, I, I feel like either way you would have cut it to the, <laughs> have it to the club anyway. No, no, no. no I, I wanted the Orion, I wanted to keep the Orion, but I oh. couldn't fit the driver in the budget. Because I didn't want to get a Seiko. Oh, I mean, okay. Because, for me, I feel Seiko is not very worth, because, as in, it's worth to put in this list. Like, I'm not saying that I'm not worth to buy. Mm. Because, it's always more expensive to retail. You know what I mean? Then uh-huh. what for I I raised like three hundred dollars or like okay, two three hundred dollars right more to buy a second retail when I can go and find it for like less. I don't know how to explain. Uh, yeah, it's for this list is not Yeah yeah, uh, I do, yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually I wanted to put the, the Murray Master. But it's so expensive. Yeah. I didn't know, you know I thought it was like, but 4, is like three. It's not, it's like six K eh. uh, Retail is six K. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Speaking about the Marine Master, right? My choice is called it's commonly known as the Baby Marine oh, Master. Shit. And it costs about four times cheaper than four or five times cheaper than the original Marine Master. So I chose this for my previous list also, the 10k one. I really like it uh, because honestly the Marine Master has always been too big for me. And honestly, you, I mean you look at the picture right. Wait, now. This is the baby Marine Master, man. Yeah. Is it not a sumo? Huh? No, it's not a sumo. No, but you know the Okay, the reference number is SPD187 and it costs 1.6k ish. Isn't this the real baby memory master? Eh? Eh? Eh, what is it called? Uh? Oh no, it's not the baby memory master. Eh? But it's, it's a baby something. Lah. Baby. Or a baby. Baby shark. Do, 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 do. What is it called? It's such a SPD187. Nickname. Yeah, it's just so like. As a diver watch, right, it's just so chiseled. Like, I would choose a Seiko for my diver watch, right, because if I really were to go diving or swimming with it, right, I wouldn't want to bring a tutor inside, uh, to be very honest with you. Like, even though I say, like, I want to beat my watch, but I wouldn't <laughs> really bring it to a swimming pool. Uh, I'll bring, I'd rather bring a, my Seiko to it. Yeah. Okay, maybe it's not a marine, baby marine master, maybe I got it wrong, but. Ah. Uh, yeah. Shit, what? But it's reminiscent of the marine master, though. Yeah, it really looks like it, but it's thinner, it's smaller. Yeah, and it comes on the bracelet, uh. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. And honestly, if I wanted to change the strap on it, it'd be very easy also because it's. I think oh, it goes well with many straps. Okay, nah, I guess so, lah. Uh, yeah, see your character, they go so. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Correct. So baby marine master. Yeah. To me, like, I can't really find any fault with this watch in terms of design, uh, In terms of design. Maybe if I were to really nitpick, it would be the date window. But other than that, is to me, it's it's perfect. Uh. And maybe it's, a, maybe it's a little bit steep for the price. Yeah. It's just a textbook diver. Yeah, the textbook yeah. diver. But yeah. I would choose my sumo over this. But it's, it's just, not saying I, that I think it's just a matter of taste uh, because I really don't like the sumo. Yeah. No, but it's a yeah. you know? It's a little bit It's only that, I mean, when you come to the final details, uh. I think it really makes a lot of difference. Uh, so that's why. I think, I think all sequel diver is good. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Like, I wear all of them. I mean, I wear all of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But buy him not necessarily. Yes. <laughs> okay, so let us know in the comments uh, which watch you will pick for each category. Right, so uh, in total, how much you huh? spend in total? Oh, oh I spent $700. <coughs> $7,888. So I have another $112 to spend on shreds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I spent 7961.60. Yeah, you can only buy one shred. Mm-hmm. So, I got $38.40 left. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let us know down in the comments um, which watch would you want to get and who won overall. Okay? Yeah. So it's the Timex versus the Tudor Black Tudor? 58, the Boulevard Comput- Computron versus the Swatch Eiffel Tower. 
Lumos Club 701 versus the Timex Marlin Brightling Super Ocean 36 versus my Seiko SPV 97 and the Seagull 1963 versus the Seiko Sudo Chrono Reissue yes yes eh what's it called citizen ah citizen yeah citizen ah, okay. <laughs> okay that brings us to the end of the Activity. podcast <laughs> The next one we talk about is a bit more nerdy, a bit more like what's it called? Uh, In- informative. Yeah. Right, but it's something that is quite. It's like okay, like whenever I bring up to my friends, like, hey, you wanna buy a watch? Or like, hey, why why have you never been polarized to buy a watch? Right. Like, then they'll say, like, why 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 one? Because they really have like their Casio or they really have their like, pistol that is quartz lah. Mm. And they're like. I can buy this for like two hundred dollars. It's quartz, it works, it comes with the time. You know what I mean? Like watches are meant to be down time, that's the primary function. Yeah. So then why should I spend let's say four hundred and above right to get into a nice mechanical or nice automatic watch? This this the, the one conversation I have the most like. Right. So then this is we should talk this podcast we bring up the topic of what's wrong with quartz or is quartz necessarily a bad choice? Or yeah. Yeah, and then maybe why why would someone find it's worth in going into automatic or going into mechanical? Mm. Right. So firstly, let's talk about how, how quartz work uh, in general. Mm. Okay? So how what's a quartz movement? It's basically a battery run movement that features a quartz crystal inside. Mm-hmm. Okay? So I have the steps written down here. Uh. Right. So the first step is I saw that I saw that article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, but it's, it's quite informative, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the first step is the battery will supply the current, right? Yeah. Supply the current to the quartz crystal and or also known as the oscillator. Yeah. So then the quartz crystal will vibrate because that's how it's like a mechanical property of. Uh, it's called a piezo electricity. Yeah, yeah, it's the property of the quartz crystal. Yeah. So it will just vibrate, right? So it will vibrate at specifically. 32,768 times per second. Mm-hmm. So just like right. And then there's this like a circuit circuit board, a small circuit yeah. board that will sense the vibrations. Yeah, vibrations. So then once once the oscillation reaches 32,768, right, mm-hmm. it will convert that that information yeah. as one electric pulse. Yeah. Then that one electric pulse will equivalent to one second, la, right? Because you power the motor, the motor will power the gears, the gears will tick the second hand one, one second forward. Mm. So, just to put it, the battery makes the quartz vibrate, the quartz vibration, at, as in after the quartz vibrate, the second will move one second forward. So, mm. that's how it goes, right? Yeah. And quartz is infinitely more accurate than. Mechanical any mechanical, any atomic big watch in the world, right? mm. because like for Rolex, right, is like plus minus three or yeah. plus minus five seconds, three like let's say three, okay, three seconds per day, you know, per yeah. day. So it's not bad, like, right? That's like, that's like the best of the best you will ever get it. Really. Yeah. There's no watchmaker in the world that can guarantee you plus minus two, plus minus one. They usually mm. all usually all of them is just plus minus three. Mm. But for quartz, right, just uh good old regular like Miota movement that's like two dollars yeah right it's plus minus 15 seconds to 20 seconds per year per year mm. so that's about plus minus one per month now, basically yeah yeah so you can see imagine for a mechanical automatic it's plus minus three per day but for a quartz it's plus minus one per month so you can see the difference lah. yeah yeah so it's not necessarily that quartz is bad you know what I mean it's better it's good even actually even better because it's more accurate and the only thing you need to worry about is oh no battery change battery that's it right and even like now with all the the new um, technology coming in right like Seiko introducing its uh, solar not really introduced but it has been there the solar mm. your battery basically will never go, go flat right yeah. like 10 years 15 years 20 years your battery can still run yeah. that's crazy to me yeah. and it's still at that accuracy of plus minus 15 seconds per year or even better because it's Seiko right that's the thing. So then why is quartz so like looked down on? Or stigmatized. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I would say for me, right, in the past, I used to stigmatize sports watches as well. And when I, when I say the past, I mean like, Last when month. I first got into watches. <laughs> so, when I first got into watches, like two, three years ago. And at that time, right, I was only really looking at Seiko's, Orient, Citizen's, affordable watches. And you know, when you walk into a watch, watch shop, like a regular world watch shop, right, there will always be, like let's say, like, for example, you look at Seiko's, right, there will always be one section of all the Prospects model, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the Seiko 5, the <laughs> Prestige model, all the automatic, la, basically all the automatic. And then at the bottom shelf, right, it's all the quartz watches. Yeah. And you, what you realize is that all those quartz watches, right, they're not as tastefully designed as compared to the automatic watches. Mm. And so for me, I always have the stigma that, oh, quartz watches are uh, not only do they uh, cut short on their movement, but they also cut back on the design. And so, because it's a very affordable watch, ma, so perhaps they are able to uh, sacrifice the design just so that they can make a cheaper watch. And to me, that has always been like a, a stigma that I had. La. But now, having new releases, right? Like it's the Solar, solar one, one, Solar watch that I bought, which is Quartz, a Solar Quartz, hmm. and also um, what else, the PRX. And I think it just goes to show that um, it's a right direction for the watch industry because now watch course watches can also be nice, can also be designed well, can also be made of quality materials. Yeah, so now my perception of course watches has changed. And honestly you look at my watch collection now of five watches, right? Most of them are course watches. <laughs> yeah. I only have one that is an um, automatic watch, my Seiko 5. Yeah, and the rest are all course watches. And I realized after a while, right, when you don't really have the time to pick up a watch and wind it or shake it and set the date and the time. Sometimes you just uh, lean towards the quartz watch because you know it's a very like fast thing. Yeah. Like you slap your wrist bang and go out. You don't need to worry about or setting a watch. Like even right now next watch right is not even at the correct time. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even Yeah so Yeah. But for me I think okay just give you like some history like, right like Quartz movement right is basically found by Seiko. Right. Actually actually it's I think it's two it's there's two guys at first that they found like oh actually like quartz has this function of like vibrating. Mm. Then is is a lot of companies were trying to like like um, create the quartz movement. Yeah, first. like the Swiss market and the Japanese yeah, market yeah. they were trying to create their own yeah, versions. Like they, they all really seem to be like right. It's like the like the like the US and Russia racing to the moon like <laughs> same, same concept, right? Yeah. So Japan won, Seiko won. They created their own course movement, the very first one, Seiko. The Astron. Yeah. Yeah. So then when the moon struck, everyone started to realize, why am I paying so much? Why am I paying like five, six times the money like, to go and get a mechanical watch that is quote unquote more more like brittle because you take out the movement, right? If you, if you have any sharp drops or anything, you might have to get a service. Yeah repair when I can just spend like a fraction of the money to get a quartz watch if it breaks I can just replace right or I can just if it stops working just replace the battery then that's called the quartz crisis like right quartz revolution quartz crisis I don't know okay, like, 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 like. then when that moment struck so a lot of the Swiss um, manufacturers struggled like they are like no one buying their, their watches anymore like, like yeah. Then they started rebranding now. So watches like Patek or brands like Patek, Rolex, they started to sell the idea of watches, not just watches, right? Mm -hmm. Because like now, even Rolex, one of their biggest marketing um, so-called tactics or schemes, right, or catchphrases is like Rolex is a uh, milestone. I mean, they want you to celebrate with Rolex. Mm. So it's not just I'm buying a Rolex because I want to go and climb a mountain. I'm buying a submariner because I want to buy the sea. It's not like that. It's more of wow, I just graduated from my my uni. I wanna mark this uh, Yeah, it's sort of like a mountain. monumental piece. Yeah. 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 So then then, then for, for Patek also is Patek's uh tech line ah, is yeah. what uh, you never really own a Patek. Yeah. You're, you're only buying really, it for your, yeah. Keeping it for the next generation. Yeah, what you see Yeah. So they all shift their direction of, onto watches being more of a 
like artistic, right? It's more there's, there's more artistic value to appreciating watches now because it's not just a functional piece of of trying to make the best um, water resistance, trying to make the best accuracy, trying to to have the most pressure resistance or whatever. Yeah, it's not all about the technicalities. Yeah, yeah. it shifts over to elegance, legacy, and more basically more as a reward, right? So that's that's why I think a lot of the so-called purists in the yeah. in the hobby, right? They will shy away from from quartz la, because it's more of functionality. Not functionality la, but they want to appreciate like the bigger brands, appreciate the legacy that the bigger brands has created, and not so much of like, like you know what I mean like I think most people like the funny thing is right, they don't mind their watches. Like you know the Michael that you see, right? Yeah. Like he got so many watches, then he just wear one on. Then it's really not a buy one. Because like watches to, to to me now, right? Is it's not even to buy the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. How long I tell the time? Just look at my phone. Just look at my computer. Why would I look at my watch? You know what I mean? Yeah. Then I have to, have to figure out what oh, our hands or six or seven or what. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense because it's, it's we are past that 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 state really. Yeah. But I still wear it because it's more of a fashion piece. It's more of the the when I look down, when I look down at the base, I can appreciate that, that that this watch has been on someone's hands. That this watch is mm. what what meaning it has to me, the significance it has to to who, who bought it to me or whatever lah. Mm. Yeah, so that's why I think that's why quartz is like considered as inferior nowadays. Yeah, in the past not so lah. In the past, people. I mean, there's this quartz revolution, right? People, everybody would want to buy quartz watch. Yeah. But for some reason, or for that reason, then Nick said, like, he has transcended over the years that now, um, you know, brands such as Rolex, Patek, people who make mechanical or automatic movements are just more prestigious now mm. as compared to quartz. La. Yeah. Because I think, I feel like when you, uh, if like a regular person were to think about the comparison between quartz and mechanical, right? Um, quartz, would be more functional. Uh, to them, it's more convenient. But but then again, right? To us as watch enthusiasts, right? Is convenience and functionality really what um, entices us to buy a watch? Not really, right? So to us, we appreciate both sides of the spectrum: quartz as well as mechanical and automatic. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's like, it's like I think it's like um, like you know the you know who's Jordan Belfort? You know the move of Wall Street. So so there's this one like really big stock breaker and then he always will say like sell me a pen oh is it the Leonardo DiCaprio one? yeah 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 he's oh. like sell me a pen but then the whole principle behind that is you can't sell the person a pen if the person is not looking for a pen right you know what I mean so whenever I have conversations with my friends about like watchers right like that non-watch enthusiasts like, if they are not looking for a watch that they can wear out if they're not looking for a watch that they have like chronological history significance or whatever then I wouldn't like force them to like, hey, you must buy a Seiko, you must buy this. And, but let's say if they are really looking at watches, then they're like, wow, it's not bad, like this Daniel Wellington or what? Then I will pursue them otherwise, lah, right? Mm. Look at the automatic instead, look at the mechanical instead. Right? Mm. But why? What's, what's the history of the brand? What's the history of the design? How does this movement differ from yours? You know what I mean? And that's, that's what I think us as watch enthusiasts can do. Lah. For the peasants, <laughs> the plebs. <laughs> yeah, actually, this is a common topic that actually I get also. Like people always ask, they, they don't understand. They just ask me like, why do you even need a watch? Why I can just get my phone? Uh, like what you say just now, I can, or I can just get a any old like regular uh, quartz watch from the store. Can I can get a Daniel Wellington? I can get a movement fossil, you know, but. Yeah, to us it just means some different because there are, there are things that about watch that we can appreciate which other people cannot see. Like to us or to me at least there's value in um, not just the physical design of the watch, but also oh where did this watch originate from? Like there are a lot of watches that um, feature a, maybe like a quartz or mechanical because of the function that they had in the past. Like for example the what, the IWC pilot, right? It serves a function in the past, like because it was used as a pilot watch. 
So that to me adds to the significance and value of buying a watch that perhaps other people don't really care about. But to me, it's something that um, adds to the value of a watch, which is why um, I think to us as watch enthusiasts, we can understand a bit more and we can, I, I think, I guess our, our minds are geared in a different way uh, as compared <laughs> to everybody else. Yeah. Okay, I think, I think it's a bad thing to do. Like, it's like every watch enthusiast will have a certain appreciation for history, design, and I don't know. You know I mean? Sentimental just, value yeah. uh, and uh, other stuff also. Uh. Because if you don't have that, then there's no point of getting the watches really. Yeah. yeah. But I, w- I, w- I would say that um, to answer the question whether quartz is bad or not, I would say obviously it's not bad. It's not a bad thing to have, it's not a bad acquisition to make. Because if you think about it, right, um, being a watch enthusiast doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, you have to get a, you have to own a mechanical watch. It doesn't mean that. Uh, you can also get a quartz watch that is very respectable by the watch community. Like you look at um, Casio, you look at Cartier. Uh, Cartier, Cartier, the, the Cartier tank, right, the cheapest watch in Cartier is a quartz movement. And yeah, so and there are other watches that are very affordable, like Timex, uh, Casio, even Seiko. I mean, you can look at Seiko's new releases for the solar. So, yeah, it, it's not a, a bad thing if you are only interested in quotes. Yeah. Yeah, as but long as it's, it's about watches, then, yeah. For me, the closing statement I have about this, this, this whole topic, right, is quotes necessarily bad. I think, no, I think it's good. It's really, really good. And even a lot of the watches that I'm looking at now are actually quotes. Yeah. Like the Longji, Longji, Presence. 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 Yeah, the <laughs> image. So it's $1,270. I think it's really, really fair. It's a dress watch, but it's beautiful to me. And then also the Cartier uh, tank, yeah. the must. Yeah. yeah. And for me, because I don't really care about the movement that much. Like, mm. It's quad, automatic, mechanical, whatever, the, whatever. What power reserve, I don't care, like, right? It's nice. I just wear it. That's, 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 that's just me. Yeah. yeah, so I think it's good because it introduces that one level below. Like, where can you find watches for ten dollars or fifteen dollars? That's what I'm thankful for quotes. Right? Like, then yeah. there's so many people that will have the watches on their wrist. Mm. Then from then on, maybe if you want to pass you, maybe you consider owning a Seiko. Maybe from owning a Seiko, you consider owning a, a Long G. Maybe from owning a Long G, you yeah. consider owning a, uh, a Tudor and then so on and so forth. Right. So it's it's all about. First thing is all about putting watches on other people's wrist, and then you start building from there. Yeah, but uh, uh, something to keep in mind, uh, I would say is also um, you have to know that quartz watches are usually cheaper now. So I mean, you look at this long jeans, right? It's nice, but for one point two seven k, it's a bit steep uh, for quartz movement. Yeah, no, but you're paying for the brand. Yeah, a brand also. You're paying for the brand. But is that brand enough to? Yes, I will buy it. I will buy it. I will buy it enough like, to tomorrow, make it more than one like, I like it enough that I will wait tomorrow to the store and buy it. <laughs> I mean, like this, I mean, I won't actually do it, but mm. you know what I mean, right? Yeah. It's because it's stainless steel as well, material. It's beautiful, I'll wear it. Mm. Like, you're this price, you're comparing it to like a Sumo, right? Which is a 6R37 movement. Automatic, very good movement, mm-hmm. very, very solid. But I wouldn't say one is significantly better than the other. Oh no, oh sorry, not significantly. I wouldn't say one is necessarily better than the other. Meaning, automatic Seiko versus quartz long jean. Because at the end of the day, it's just come as a personal preference. Mm. If you want to buy the brand, then you go for long jean. If you want to go for automatic, like, wow, yeah, automatic, like, you must have automatic watch, then you go for Seiko. You know what I mean? So, so where do you, like, draw the line between, like, a price that is acceptable and not acceptable? Because uh, one person seven is To me, there's no line. To me, there's no line. Like, I would pay for Oyster Quartz. 5K. Because there's no more extra cost, you know what I mean? Mm. It's a discontinued model. Right? And then if you, buy, if you go by the vintage one, it's 4.5k, 4. 4. 5k even. So I guess it's because like the design cues yeah. are unique. Yeah. I'm paying for the history, the that's brand. Fair, that's fair, that's fair. The design cues, yeah. Mm. Because, because movement to me is not one of the, the, the priorities I put. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so enough about the quartz talk. <laughs> right, so shocking. We're finally going to reach our last topic of the day. Yes. Right. We have name dropped this brand a couple of times. A lot of times actually in this episode. <laughs> right. It's Daniel Wellington. Yes. Right. So 
<sighs> What's your opinion on this brand? Daniel Wellington okay. Do you like it or not? I have to give it a bit of credit Because Daniel Wellington and In the previous episode I mentioned Vincero Basically if you cluster in one umbrella term It's called fashion watches Fashion watches are what got me into watches really? If I were really to put it it's fair bluntly right? So I have to give it some credit Because of their marketing Because of the way they present their watch The way they advertise their watch and Which now I think are all marketing gimmicks But I have to give it some credit lah. But in a nutshell right, What I think about these watches now Is that they are cheaply made watches That cost 10 times more than what it's worth Because if you think about it right um, for most people who don't know the truth about Daniel Wellington or movement or this kind of fashion watches, right, is that they are cheaply made, their materials are all okay. cheaply made. Fun fact, uh. I actually do a research, right? Mm. Not research, I mean, I guess I just do a quick little market search on wholesalers to find out how much it costs to make a, a watch. Ah, yes. Right. Interesting. So, I went on a search. Daniel Wellington uses a Miyota GL20 movement, quartz, <laughs> right? And you can find it on. Yeah, let me check this. The site I found it on. Alibaba. It's not, it's not Alibaba. Eh. Uh, or oh, Lazada. Mm. Lazada. 470 for a piece. Right. And this oh. is. This is. No, this is. Us buying one unit. Alright, oh, right, right. right. If you have direct connections to China, overseas will be cheaper. Mm. I heard online like, a lot of videos say that like, it's just 20 cents. And you can buy a thousand cents. Yeah. 20 cents, 30 cents, by the way. But let's just give you the benefit of the doubt. 470. $6. Mm. That's GD. Right. Then I found an average case online. So it's nothing like the Daniel Wellington case, uh, but I couldn't really find any other case. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's just giving the benefit of the doubt. $7.68 seven SGD. Mm -hmm. A cheap NATO strap, around $1.20. The watch hands, around $1.40. The dial of the watch, around $0.60. Cents. Mm -hmm. $0.60 cents, uh, converted uh, on US. And then the miscellaneous fees I put in is just like, like your employee, right? Um, your employees, your, your what else? Um, like rent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, yeah. Two dollars SGD. So your average cost to make a watch is seventeen dollars fifty eight cents SGD. Right. You round it up, right? twenty dollars. Then I went to search. The retail price for uh, the Daniel Wellington is three hundred and seventy nine dollars. Oh, it's more than ten times it. Yeah. Wait, three hundred and seventy nine dollars. Yeah. The last time, like maybe like ten years ago, uh. I would say it's about hundred hundred plus. Under 200. Now it has gone up to 300 plus for the same design. Classic Sheffield, right? I think so. For the same design, uh, by the way. Let me search. Yeah, Classic Sheffield, is it? Yeah. 379. Yeah, and to me in the past, I used to think that, oh, what, 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 what a nice watch. Made with very good quality. <laughs> but yeah. now, now that I know better, yeah, I think with a lot of people, it's just, they're just oblivious to the fact that. Um, like how much does this watch actually cost? Yeah. Just just to put it in perspective, but three seven nine, right? You can buy my Bulova with that. You can buy a Seagull for that. Yeah. Let me let me see what else can you buy from your, your list that you mentioned just now. Three seven nine. You can buy my Citizen Suno. Uh huh. If you spend a little bit more, a little bit more, you can buy my Timex Mali. Uh huh. Which is mechanical. Yeah. Yeah. If you just spend half of that, you can get my Swatch. <laughs> Yeah, that's why it's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's, it's basically glorified drop shipping. Glorified shipping. Drop shipping is a, a term basically like the shopping people, like the shopping um, people who sell their stuff, right? They will buy from Taobao at like 80 cents a piece. Oh, okay. and then they will sell it on Shopee for like 120. Mm -hmm. So they keep their profit margin low per piece, but their sales volume will increase. Right. Then those people who don't know better will. You buy la, mm. right? But this is ridiculous uh. And just another fact about Daniel Wellington, right? The founder actually his name is not Daniel Wellington. <laughs> right. His name is what? Philip Heisender. He's a Sweden Sweden businessman. When you search his, his name out, right, it's not even watchmaker. You know, it's not like, what what's the what we expect? Like not a watch brand, not a watch owner, what? It's just Businessman, entrepreneur, mm. right? And his whole company started in 2016. Then it It based off. It's like it's more of a business thing, you know, than a watch thing for him. Yeah. He hired just a lot of like social media influencers. Then 
she just considered the watch now and you go and advertise right and she target a lot of a lot of their, their followers and all that then people who like i said do more better who go and buy it because they think wow no bad what because it made an apple of that maybe it was cheaper right yeah. it's cheap then if my influencer is my favorite influencer is wearing it and it's a watch and then those that don't know about quartz those that don't know, who don't know about what they'll be more drawn to like yeah. fashion watches by per se right then just get it then it's like a scam it's like fully a scam yeah. like I can't even say, say otherwise yeah honestly okay if I ask you this if, if it costs say $25 uh, fair it's fair right <laughs> yeah so to us right Okay, even though the guy is uh, not a watch maker, he's not focused on making watches, he's just a business entrepreneur. But it's the fact that it's priced so unreasonably, right? Which is why we're so like which is why we don't support it. So it's not because like, oh we don't like the design or what. Okay, if if it's, if you're talking about design, I, I don't really like it. Uh. It's personal preference. And I will understand that the general public might like the design of it. But what you're paying for, right, is an un- unreasonable price. Which is the I would say to me is the main reason why I don't or we don't support it. Mm. Yeah. You can you can you can buy like half the Seiko 5 catalog. Probably more than half the Seiko 5 catalog <laughs> <laughs> with that, that 379 price tag. Yeah. Yeah, and you're getting better materials, you're getting a brand that is history, you're getting reliability, you're getting um uh, yeah, a movement that it's just way better. Yeah, that's why, that's why to us. I mean, okay, honestly, you're talking about, just now you're talking about how the origins of the brand are not, uh, not great, right? Yeah. Um, but what I see also from designer brands, like Gucci, they also make watches, uh, right? Um, mm-hmm. Some other brand like uh, Bulgari also. Yeah, no, but now it's, it's justified because you're paying for the brand. Ah, okay, but for Gucci, is You're paying Gucci. for the brand, no? That's what I'm saying, you're paying for the brand. Mm. Then they're not. But it's still class- classified as. I would still say it's classified as fashion watch. Fashion watch. Yeah. 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 But I rather buy. I rather buy a Gucci watch than on the other way. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm very yeah. Gucci, not the other way. Yeah. That's yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, it brings it back to the point uh, of it still does put watch what like their watches right. Or it still does put watches on people's hands. Yeah. So that's a plus, right? But the only thing is, it sucks to see people who believe that this, this is it, this is the yeah, This is affordable luxury, but yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's, it's a lot of things about their marketing. Uh, them saying, oh, we call the middleman and what, mm. all that bullshit. Then yeah. they, they sell their, their, their things for so X. That's why right, 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 we don't support it. Uh. Do you support it? Yeah, obviously not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if you want to see us give some alternatives, to your or to this daily Wellington watches, just let us know, okay? And then we'll do it for the next episode. Yeah. So I guess it's been how long? It's been one hour already. It's been one hour already. So oh my days. <laughs> end of the episode, okay? So yeah. thank you for tuning in to the Swatch. Eh? Not <laughs> Swatch. <laughs> what's, what's the name? Ah, uh, thanks for tuning in to the Stretch Links podcast. We'll see you soon. Yeah, if you guys have any comments, feedback, any topics that you want us to talk about, please leave them in the comments below. Bye. See ya.